We need to be focused on securing our streets, making sure no lives are lost because all black lives matter. That of David Dorn and that of this eight-year-old girl. Thank you. Well, that was quite the mic drop. New York Times published a column in March of 2019 by a former Times executive editor that asserted the Trump campaign in Russia had an overarching deal that the quit of help in the campaign against Hillary for the quo of a new pro-Russian foreign policy. That's what we call the Russia hoax, which was investigated for three years with taxpayer dollars before ultimately getting an exoneration in the Mueller report. It is inexcusable, the failed Russia reporting of the New York Times. And I think it's time that the New York Times and also the Washington Post hand back their Pulitzers. Um, Kaylee, in a previous life, before you were press secretary, you worked for the campaign. And you made a comment, I believe, on Fox, in which you said President Trump will not allow the coronavirus to come to this country. Given what has happened since then, obviously, would you like to take that back? I guess I would turn the question back on the media and ask similar questions. Does Vox want to take back that they proclaim that the coronavirus would not be a deadly pandemic? Does the Washington Post want to take back that they told Americans to get a grip the flu is bigger than the coronavirus? Does the Washington Post likewise want to take back that our brains are causing us to exaggerate the threat of the coronavirus? Does the New York Times want to take back that fear of the virus may be spreading faster than the virus itself? Does NPR want to take back that the flu was a much bigger threat than the coronavirus? And finally, once again, the Washington Post, would they like to take back that the government should not respond aggressively to the coronavirus? I'll leave you with those questions and maybe you'll have some answers in a few days. Thank you very much. Just, you were, you so it brings the question, it brings the question to light. Why then did we have many years of investigating collusion that these Obama administration officials never existed, they never saw any evidence of, but for three years the American people were dragged through the mud and told that their choice for the President of the United States might have been a Russian asset based on no evidence of all, at all. Uh, this president was exonerated by the Mueller report, um, and there are some real questions for these individuals who are saying one thing, pu thing publicly and another thing privately. Thank you so much. I think I got to all of you, and we'll be back soon. Finally, what about people that are alleged by the media to be segregationists? NBC tells us Joe Biden didn't just compromise with segregationists. He fought for their causes in schools, experts say. CNN tells us letters from Joe Biden reveal how he sought support of segregationists in the fight against busing. Washington Post tells us that Biden's tough talk on 1970s schools desegregation plans could get him new scrutiny. And there are several more that, where that came from. So I'll leave you with the question, should we then rename the Biden Welcome Center? Thanks very much, guys.